Shalom and welcome to part two of the show. Now we ended part one talking about the Georgia Guidestones and how the elites want to use the microchip as a device to help them maintain population control. And the key word that they use for this is called population stabilization. And a channel that they're using now is the immigrant situation. They're saying that there's too many Issacharites, so-called Mexicans, coming into America and thus is leading to overpopulation of the United States. So they need a way that they can track these immigrants and stop them from coming into the border and figure out how many of them are, are here. But that's complete BS because what they're doing, pursuant to the book of Psalms, where the Lord said, why do the heathen rage? Why do they imagine a vain thing? Basically what they're trying to do is they're seeing that there's a so-called baby boom of Jake and Jake is overpopulating the United States. And now Esau, they like to call Jake the minority, but they have a new term, they call it minority majority. In other words, Jake is taking over the United States or taking over the, the land. There's more Jake than there are so-called white people, Edomites, crackers. Just like uh, in the book of Exodus, when you read in Egypt, how the Pharaoh, he came against Israel and he said, look, we're gonna have to put them in slavery because they were outnumbering the Egyptians. Well, that's, they're doing the same exact thing. And their primary target is all of Jake, from the so-called Negroes, to the so-called Puerto Rican, to the so-called Colombian, all you Uncle Toms, all the way down to you Mexicans. They plan, you're the main target for that chip and you're the main target for depopulation. Thank you, Laura. Um, Rick, what does population stabilization mean and how do you seek to enforce that? Well, we're not the epidomes of uh, Malta, as uh, some would have uh, you believe, but uh, the world population is a concern. The Associated Press just has an article today saying that the world, world population is going to reach 7 billion people by the year 2012, we're 6.7 so billion people today. And so, you know, what it means for Americans is unrestrained population growth. I'm a baby boomer. I was born in the middle of the last century. The population in the country has doubled in my lifetime. Those kids in high school today are going to see a half a billion people living in America. And the question we're asking is, why do we need to have this growth and where is it coming from? And we've located the source. About right. Over 80% of it is coming from immigration right. and the children that immigrants have. Okay, so what do you propose? I'm gonna go back to the basics here because I'm just gonna like let you carry on with this crazy idea that people are bad and we should have fewer of them because I actually like people. I wanna have more people, but let's say you're right, okay? <clears throat> How do you enforce your worldview? Is this an international uh, body that somehow mandates population growth? I mean, China's trying that with its one child policy and then after the big natural disaster there, they're going, oh, maybe this isn't such a good idea after all. We're gonna lose population. Our concern is about American population growth and, of course, California. The 37 million people in Cal 37 million people in California today are going to be 60 million people in the next two to three decades. So you have no idea, so, Rick. I can't. This is so, driving me crazy. You're driving me crazy. Do our you idea have is a plan, to, Rick? You no, no. You're spouting yes. off things from an office in California. This is my question. You're some, saying something very controversial here, and I hope people understand what you're saying. You think there should be fewer people in the United States? I'm trying to figure out which people are the undesirables. <laughs> and you pointed out you think immigrants oh my are undesirable. God. I guess illegal immigrants are undesirable, and all those children they have are undesirable. And you know, I don't, I don't want illegal people here, but I don't, I don't want people to be killed either. So my question to you is, with your worldview, <laughs> this is how unbelievable. Do you enforce this one child per person utopia? How do you do it? Enough with the spouting. You know? I don't want to hear that. We don't, use, we don't use the word undesirable. What we want to do is to see the immigration laws don't. enforced to cut down the numbers of uh, the influx of illegal aliens into the country, which is driving almost all of the population growth in this country. We want the immigration laws enforced. We don't feel that it's a fair trade-off to leave open borders so employers can have access okay. to cheap labor and to overpopulate the country for the future generation. Okay, well, you and I agree about uh, illegal immigration. Okay, we agree on one thing, that we need to enforce our borders, enforce our laws. 
But you go from that to saying, you know, population stabilization, which sounds a lot like population control, which sounds a lot but like this crazy alarmism in the population bomb. I think that wasn't that the book in the 70s. All their predictions turned out to be completely ridiculous and never came to pass. So I want you to be real careful here, Rick, and you don't get into that, uh, those very murky waters. I think that's a dangerous place for you to go. You don't have to go that far to argue that America is a sovereign country and we should enforce our borders. I don't think you have to go that far. Well, that's true. Uh, we also don't need to get to the Malthusian apocalypse or, or the predictions of the population bomb to understand that overpopulation decreases standards of living. We have uh, problems standards with health care, education. Standards of living is increasing around the world. Uh, people are living longer around the world, Rick. Uh, the population, yeah, is going up. But we actually also have people who are being born who come up with cures for diseases, who innovate, who become entrepreneurs, and become you know wonderful, loving people who pass down a culture to the next generation. So I would agree I, with I you. You, know, you have to manage these things. But the idea that that you can you, you can somehow through you know I guess argument or column writing or whatever it is that you do that somehow you're going to stop people from having children. I don't think that's the problem. I think it's standing up for your country and sovereignty, and, and that's fine. Do you see what I'm saying? Our, our goal is to remind people that the population continues to grow faster than India or China, and that the source of that population growth is unrestrained immigration and the federal government not enforcing the immigration law. That's what's causing it. People are good. I've heard the argument waiting for the mythical Mozart. Yes, there's right, possible you're worried about, geniuses that haven't right. been born yet. Right. But we're Wait. worried about this country and the future generations of this country and what they're going to have Wait, to deal yeah. with if we don't get control of our borders and our population. Okay, but why are you focusing on the borders, though? If it's over population why, why does the borders even come into it I, you know it's across the board it's because white brown and black right or is it just brown skin people who you don't think should be born not at all with us it's not well, focusing on illegal many. immigration and I think that gets you into a really really murky territory and uh, Over you know, I appreciate it we're, we're out of time. I understand. Out of time. Over 80% over, over of our population growth is coming from immigrants and the children they have. That's where we want to see the federal government focus its efforts to enforce the borders and to cut yeah, down the numbers fine. that are coming into the country. And enforce the borders, yes. Don't don't use words like population stabilization. I get very protective over people living. Um, I appreciate it, though. Uh, you're a stand-up you guy to join us. And funny man, Mike shows Myers, that By the year 2042, white Americans will no longer represent the majority of the population. That prediction is eight years sooner than previously expected. Josh McKelvin joins us from the news. We mentioned a moment ago new numbers from the U.S. Census Bureau tonight are projecting America will become more diverse more quickly than was previously thought. The experts yeah, now say... for my word. Do your duty. Make more babies. That's a lesson drawn out of two interesting stories over the last couple of days. First, a story yesterday that half of the kids in this country under five years old are minorities. By far, the greatest number are Hispanic. Know what that means? 25 years, and the majority of the population is Hispanic. Why is that? Well, Hispanics are having more kids than others. Notably, the ones Hispanics called gabachos, white people, are having fewer. Now, in this country, European... I thought these devils weren't racist. Yeah, right. Well, there it is, brothers. So Esau is scared to death because they, want, they need the population at a number to where they can control the people. And the main people they need to control is Jake. See, it's one thing to own somebody physically, is to have physical bands on somebody, but when you have a mental and spiritual band on somebody, man, you're on a whole nother level. So that's basically what Esau's plan is. His plan is to use his microchip as a form of mind control. And uh, we're gonna get into that later, how the microchip can actually be used to control somebody's mind and to actually turn them into a robot. Because what you brothers gotta understand is that the battle that's being fought, it's not a physical battle, like you see them doing in the Middle East, or the so-called war on terror. The real battle is a spiritual battle like Ephesians 6 and 12, for we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, demonic powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, AKA the Illuminati, AKA the elites of the society, against spiritual wickedness 
in high places because this is the time now where more and more Jakes are being spiritually awoken. See, this is like a chess move. The Most High is making his move. Esau is making their moves. So the Most High is waking brothers up. So Esau, he's moving frantically. See, really it seems like they got things on the lock, you know, but really they don't, man. Really Esau is scrambling to get this world under his thumb because he's scared to death. And what's he scared to death of? The truth. The truth is the only thing that can bring this devil down. And that's exactly what's going on right now. So what he's trying to do is, his plan is to basically halt Jake spiritually. Because Jake is waking up to the fact that this white man is a devil. That this American dream is just a dream and nothing more. So, how is Esau going to sell the chip to Jake and to the rest of the population? He's going to do it through his good old tactics called fear-mongering. Which, by the way, is also against the scripture. The Most High speaks against fear-mongering. But Esau is going to start with the poor of Jake first. And what he's going to do is he's going to force them to use a microchip in order to receive welfare benefits.